up until three years ago, I'd never even done any kind of acrobatics or gymnastics for. I'll show you. I'm actually an engineer who works in an office full time. This is how my office, uh, my colleagues see me, a uh, professional engineer for the last 10 years. And growing up, I was never the outdoors type, and even as a kid, I was too scared to go on any kind of roller coaster that would turn me upside down. So, how did I come from being a sensible engineer who likes things to be logical and rational to stepping out on my weekends um, as an aerialist, finding herself in places like this? The answer is actually curiosity. What do you imagine would happen if you allowed your curiosity to dictate your actions? My story began three years ago when I moved here to Switzerland uh, with my nine-year-old daughter, and I saw this in the newspaper. At the time, I couldn't read any German at all, but I really liked this picture a lot. So I called the phone number in the, uh, the article, and I, it led me to find out that there were actually aerial silks classes available locally for very young girls. So I took my daughter along to the class, <laughs> and uh, she took one look and said, wow, I never knew such a thing even existed. And I said, oh, well, what would you think if I was to join the class as well? <laughs> and she said, well, that would be really cool, because then we can do it together. So uh, I was very shy and hesitant, but I asked the teacher and she allowed me to join along with all the other very young little girls in the class. And that was actually how I began doing aerial silks. So this is my daughter and I uh, <laughs> doing aerial silks as a great contrast to what I did in my daily work in the office. And uh, to my surprise, we actually began doing performances in public. And uh, I was amazed, actually, because the audience would be clapping and cheering for us. And I found this hilarious somehow, because in all the years of engineering study and professional work in the office, nobody goes, woohoo, and, and uh, applauds you just for being an engineer. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, I wasn't used to this, <laughs> um, but I found it very gratifying. <laughs> so I found aerial silks um, so aesthetically appealing that I really wanted to get some really neat photos taken of it. So it motivated me to ask around to see whether I could find somebody who would be interested in collaborating with me. And that's how I came across uh, a young, very talented young photographer uh, named Louis, and this is what we shot together. This is literally hanging over Lake Zurich. Near China wise, actually. <laughs> um, so then my boyfriend one night comes over and says, oh, Mickey, I found something, I got to show it to you. And it was a documentary about highlining. I'll show you what this looks like. Highlining is slack lining, but done at extreme heights. When I took a look at this, when I, the first time I saw it, and I saw them walking across this line, way up high in between the cliff peaks, it took my breath away. I loved it, and, and I wanted to experience it. I wanted to know what it felt like to be up there in the emptiness with nothing above and nothing below, just but the mountains and the nature all around. But I was really useless at walking across the line. <laughs> so, I, and I didn't want it to take years of training just to try what it was like to be up on a high line. So, that's how I came up with this crazy fantasy idea in my head. What if I was to attach the aerial silk midway along the high line and do my aerial silks hanging from that? <laughs> the idea really scared me. But I was also really damn curious to know whether this could even work. So I was still stuck because I had no idea how I could find somebody to do uh, highlining with. 
At the time, all I could tell my different friends <laughs> um, about this crazy fantasy idea, and with some of them I could also discuss how we could uh, possibly rig it so that it would be safe, well, at least in theory. <laughs> So then, um, several months later, a very fortunate connection occurred when it just so turned out that a friend of a friend of a friend happened to be an expert highliner. And he was told of this crazy idea of mine, and he said, yes, let's try this out. So it was the first moment where I realised that this crazy fantasy idea that I had might actually come true. So, I was totally surprised when we actually set a date to make this happen and we tried it. This is what it looked like on our first attempt. You can see that there's a lot of rigging and we had to make a lot of adjustments, but it started working out really well and it felt really good. Hanging from this line felt fantastic. So then I saw a picture of a really magical location and a vision grew in my mind. What would it look like if we put the aerial silks <laughs> between two perfectly perpendicular cliff faces. And so I shared this vision with my highliner friend, Salvatore, and he agreed to, put, uh, to assemble the team together to put up the highline. And uh, this time I even attracted the attention of a, an expert aerialist from Hollywood who flew all the way over just to help us create the, the rigging arrangement. So one very cold day in March earlier this year, near to burn, uh, as you can see, I'm still wearing my snow pants at that stage. <laughs> we made it a reality. This is what we created. It was amazing getting to do my aerial silks hang in such an extraordinary location. I loved it, it felt fantastic. I really like looking at these pictures because it reminds me of how I learned to bridge the gap between the fantasy idea that was in my mind and making it a reality. So I had other ideas too. <laughs> um, in Switzerland, I unexpectedly came across a new hobby, which was ballooning, hot air ballooning. This is a photo um, of us flying uh, in competition in Japan, actually. It's where I learned all about flying hot air balloons as a crew member. And one morning, when I was holding the top rope of the balloon, a thought occurred to me that <laughs> this could be a really interesting point to attach the aerial silk. <laughs> and at this point, it sort of felt quite natural to, natural to me to want to combine my hobbies together. So <laughs> I, I suggested it to the pilot, and he said, let's try it. So here we are on our first trial, and the look of the disbelief on the people who were watching this when we first trialed was amazing. I loved it. <laughs> My pilot also loved it so much that he made it a feature of his held trophy, it was a ballooning event that's held in Appenzell every year here in Switzerland. <laughs> so I love creating something new and unique that inspires other people to join, or even just to watch in fascination. The ideas of aerial silk, or the aerial silks, and the ballooning silks only happen because I express these crazy ideas to people around me. And uh, I also worked, uh, figured out the logical steps that were required to make it happen. So when the ideas spread, and captivated others, they came back to me and said, let's make this happen. And we collaborated. So there was no money exchanged, um, there was no sponsoring of any kind for this. Uh, we all did it just to have fun, to, to try and see what we could create, out of curiosity, to see what we could create together. So what will happen if you allow your curiosity to dictate your actions. This is where it led me this summer. <laughs> Upside down, Miss Jane. <laughs> <laughs> this is really fun, really fun.
So I say don't be shy. Start making your plans. Thank you. <laughs>